Hello, beautiful brothers and sisters. This is Virginia. Let me open with prayer. Heavenly Father, I pray that your words will be spoken here, not mine. Show me what to say and draw everybody here who's supposed to see it, and may they all be blessed, and may Jesus have all the glory. I ask it in his name. Amen. Well, first let me present the gospel. Jesus loves you, and he wants you to spend eternity in heaven with him. But that can't happen unless you are born again. And this is how that happens. First, you admit that you're a sinful creature. Then you believe that Jesus is who he says he is, fully God, fully man. He came to earth and he lived a perfect and sinless life. He went to the cross and shed his blood to pay the price for your sins. And he died, was buried, and rose again from the dead. And all you have to do is just believe that. And without adding in any of your own good works or trying to be good, because that's not going to work. The moment you believe is like a personal encounter between you and God in your heart. And when that happens, you are born again. You are saved. And you can never lose your salvation. And the Holy Spirit will indwell you for eternity. And so I hope that you have believed and that you've become born again. And if so, please send me an email. My email address is in the description box, so you can leave a comment below. So what I wanted to do today was just talk with you and take you on a nature walk around my house. I'm standing outside the front door of my house, and uh, I think it's going to rain. I hear thunder in the background, but that's okay. Uh, I can go inside quickly. Um, this is my front flower bed. I love flowers, and there's a wide variety here. There's hostas and marigolds and mums and wild geraniums, and this right here is a holly bush, and in the background are um, hydrangeas, and this beautiful big bush here right in front of the dining room windows is an azalea. I don't know, for those of you who like flowers, that this is something that I, I like to do. So anyway, walking around this side of the house, there's a great big pine tree here. And um, just wanted to say that I am, in case some of you don't know me uh, personally, like what my situation is, I'm, I'm married and I have four children and six grandchildren. And none of them live around here at all, except for one. I have one daughter and family uh, with the three granddaughters that live in Indianapolis because we moved here. I have some wonderful peony bushes here. And, um, you know, I didn't get to do any gardening this year because I was in Idaho. Most of you know that. I was there for almost three months. And so my garden is... is um, well, it's not the way I would do it, but my husband worked on it very hard, and I'm very happy that he did that. So this was vegetables last year, and we have some wood for our fire pit, which we really don't ever use. We don't really use it, and I don't know why, but anyway, so I'm heading towards the backyard, and uh, just wanted to say that I tend to be a person who I'm I'm kind of formal and you can tell that by my videos that I make um, they're I'm a former teacher and so they're they're like well prepared it's like a lesson plan in a way and organized and logical flow of ideas and that is part of who I am but on the other hand I have a real heart and a love for everybody and especially my brothers and sisters in Christ. And this is not an easy time for any of us. And especially for those of us who have family who are not saved. I have family that is not saved. And that includes my husband. And um, we just keep praying. And what I've discovered is that we need to, I need to just be quiet, meek and quiet and also um, just love him and ask the Lord to bless him and just keep going. And so it, 
it makes a huge difference um, in our lives when we, we just set our heart to ask the Lord to, to produce the fruit of the Spirit in us. And everybody has their things that they're going through right now. They're going through, I mean, who knows what it might be. There are job issues, health issues. Uh, some people are getting evicted uh, because of, of the eviction moratorium is, is expired. And I just know that the Lord sees everything. He sees all of our situations and he loves us. And he absolutely is going to take care of us, all of us. And so I just wanted to pray for you while I'm out here doing this. Um, by the way, this is my oak tree, which actually grew quite a bit this year. So, Heavenly Father, I pray for my, for my brothers and sisters. I pray for everybody. First of all, those who are not saved, they must get saved immediately because the end is so close. Jesus is almost here. He's going to descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of the archangel and the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ um, will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the air with them, to be with them together in the clouds and to meet the Lord in the air. And so we need to, we need to really seriously seek out people who are not saved and and tell them about how much Jesus loves them and so um, but anyway I did I do pray for you I pray that the Lord will bless you and keep you and make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace and I pray that he will protect you from all the wiles of the evil one. And there are so many. What I've seen uh, recently in my life and uh, elsewhere is attacks of anger. Um, it's so easy to, to give in to that. And also fear. Absolutely. Those two, I think, are, are working overtime right now in all of us. But he who is in us is greater than he who is in the world. And we have nothing to fear because perfect love casts out fear. And Jesus has loved us with an everlasting love. And uh, I also pray for healing for people who are sick. There are so many who are sick uh, with ailments that are coming here and there. And the evil one can, can attack us with different things. And so, Lord, I pray that you would, would heal every person watching this video and that you would drive away a spirit of infirmity that might be attacking them and restore them to perfect health permanently that it not be just temporary but that it might be permanent and I pray that you would provide them with courage and that you would encourage them and edify them and build them up so that they can withstand the things that are coming that are coming upon the earth. And I also pray that you would fill them with the Holy Spirit. Fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord, and pour the fruits of the Spirit into them, and may they, may they be magnified in these people. Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance especially faith right now the shield of faith is more important than almost anything because the world is about to be turned upside down things are going to flip suddenly it'll be a sudden flip and yet jesus is with us and we will have nothing to fear and so i also pray that you would remind them of how powerful you are and how much you love them. And as David finished Psalm 23, he said, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And that's us. 
we have a bright future ahead of us. So I love you all. Thank you for coming. God bless you. And if there's another video to put up, I will record it and post it according to the will of God. Until then, bye for now.